tragic developments with the conflict erupting in the Middle East over the weekend. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Saturday said that Israel was, and I quote, going into a long and difficult war in response to the unprecedented attacks by Hamas on Israel. US President Joe Biden has also pledged, and I quote, rock solid support for Israel. But for right now, for our purpose, let's look at how markets, uh, financial markets have responded during periods of extreme tensions between Israel and Palestine. Let's look at the most extreme periods, right? Uh, and we're looking at data going back the last 20 years. And I want to start with the second intifada, which intifada is an Arabic word, uh, which kind of refers to uprising, rebellion, etc. This lasted a full five years, which, which saw escalated violence that ended with the withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip. Uh, the first one, of course, was, uh, you know, in the late 80s, uh, running into 90s, the first uh, intifada, so as to speak. The second one, uh, which, uh, and you know, these are periods of tension slash conflict, was in 2008, December 2008 to Jan 2009. That lasted a full 22 day. There was a 22 day con conflict. Uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, very intense, but it was uh, short lived in that sense. And also, this happened during, you know, the period of global financial crisis linking into the markets. Let's move on uh, to the next one, which is. Uh, 2014, which was between July and August, this was a longer conflict as compared to the uh, previous one, uh, and this was a 52-day conflict, uh, which we uh, actually saw. Uh, and then you have to come back all the way to a more recent one, which is May to June 2021, uh, which is known as the Gaza War. This was an even briefer one, the briefest of uh, the ones that we are looking at, and this lasted all of uh, 11 odd days or so. Now, uh, for our purpose, as I said, we are looking at, uh, you know, the, uh, what markets have done, right? I, uh, I'm only looking at market reaction during two instances, 2014 and 2021. The first one, of course, we don't know, right? Uh, from 2000 to 2005, will this one last as long? We don't know. So we've kind of kept that aside. And how do you kind of uh, sort of look at, you can't look at market reaction over a five-year period. So that's been kept out. And the second one happened during uh, the global financial markets a global financial crisis, the GFC. So, you know, there were other impacts as well which were weighing in. So it's kind of hard to isolate the impact of exactly uh, the uh, conflict here in the Middle East. So as I said, for the purpose of, uh, you know, this particular exercise, two episodes, July to August 2014 and May to June 2021. Look at this, US equities down about five to five and a half odd percent in both these episodes. US 10 year yield down 22 basis points and down 20 basis points. Basically, it's a sign of risk off, right? Clear sign of risk off. Oil is a little mixed, but I'll tell you why. Uh, crude oil down 12% during 2014. But remember, in June of uh, May, June of 2014, oil had hit almost $120 a barrel. So it was coming into this uh, particular conflict at a very, very high level. And then in, during the course of this particular conflict, it fell about 12%. The 2021 May to June uh, period, oil prices went up 19%. That was a very substantial jump that we saw. And of course, Israeli equities, which are of course most impacted, uh, three and a half and nine percent cuts there. The point is that uh, market reaction actually has been meaningful if you look at equities, if you look at yields, and if you look at oil prices as well. The hope is that this conflict sees de-escalation quickly. But just this morning, the Wall Street Journal, the newspaper, cited senior members of Hamas and Hezbollah saying that Iranian security officials helped plan the attack. So there is Iran in the mix as well. The risk really is that the conflict could escalate into a more severe proxy war. Let's hope that is not the case.